Happy New Year, everybody. This is the very first video of 2023. My name's Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk. Uh, this particular channel is a channel all about the Home Project Studio and really finding new and creative ways to maximize your knowledge and your potential and hopefully inspire your creativity at creating the very best music that you're capable of doing. Um, you know, I was thinking about this year. I've been looking forward to the beginning of this year. This hopefully will be the first kind of normal year that we've that we've had in quite the last few years. You know what I mean. And and so I started thinking about a lot of things, a lot of reflection, you know. We're supposed to think of these New Year's resolutions. Now, historically, I'm not big on that, but I wanted to share some perspectives that I've gained and give you some insight about what it is you can do to improve all of your skills and all of your knowledge. You know, this is a channel, like I said, this channel is about recording music, most, most intently for folks at home recording music, although you can watch from anywhere regarding where you come from, whatever walk of life. Um, but that's what generally the advice that I typically give, you know, and, and so if you're watching this, I have to imagine you're already passionate uh, about creating music. You've got a drive. You've got that thing that's just deep, deep, deep down in your soul that makes you want to just get in and give it the very best you've got, you know, and, and I want to encourage you to keep doing that. I want to, I want to encourage you to keep doing that in every aspect of your life, not just music, you know, and so I want to touch on that. For me, you know, what my life is about at this stage of my life, and I'm older than most of you folks out there. I'm sure you figured that one out already. Um, but I'm all about learning, learning as much as I can. I can't seem to get enough of it. And, and I want to encourage all of you guys to do the same thing. Make sure that you're learning something different every single day. If you've lost that inspiration and you've lost that creativity that does happen to all of us from time to time, well, fill that gap with learning something. You know, one of the things that I, that I you know, I've gone through many evolutions of my journey with music. When I was younger, um, it was way more than a passion. It was an obsession. I ate, lived, and breathed everything about music. And because when you're younger, you have the time to do that. And you can afford to risk a lot. Um, but as you get older and you get married and you start having kids, then you've got to try to juggle that whole balance thing. How do we find that balance and still be able to do that, but yet not take away from my family, my relationships, my kids, all of those things? You know, and then you're getting knee deep into a career and you're focused on that. So now you've got the family, the relationships, the job, and still trying to find the music. And so I want to ask you, what do you do to fill your in-between times when you have them? If you take a couple of days off a week, what do you do during those days? Uh, do you ever find that maybe you play a lot of video games? Do you ever find that you kind of just want to sit down and sit in front of the TV and get on Netflix and go through every show on the planet and just, you know, just zip right through them all? You know, I, if you do that, and you're doing that kind of thing. Look, there's nothing wrong with those things. I'm not here to criticize anybody for anything. But, but I'd want to inspire you to learn something. Instead of doing that, find something you're passionate about. If you don't have the mojo for the music that day, then go find something else. Find something else that you're passionate about and go all in and become obsessed with getting as good at it as you possibly can. You look at me a couple of years ago, I didn't know the first thing about videography, none of this stuff. I'd never edited a video, never done any of that stuff in my life. But then because of the, you know, the whole uh, uh, COVID thing and everything, I found myself sitting at home for a long period of time. So I tried to create another YouTube channel uh, for my wife. And so I was forced into having to learn all of this stuff. And I've learned a lot. I mean, look, I mean, hey, I do a pretty good job, I think. What do you think? Um you know, but I've learned a lot about it, and I'm, re I'm ready to share all that knowledge with anybody who wants to learn it. I'm dying to teach it to anybody who's interested, you know, and so, you know, but there's passions about things. So whatever you do in life, for me as an example, right, I'm cheap. I won't pay anybody to fix anything in my house. My washer goes out, I fix it. My dryer goes out, I fix it. Refrigerators, 
dishwashers, ovens. I fix them all. My car breaks down. I fix the majority of things. And I won't go knee crazy into it, but I'll do the fundamental stuff because one, I'm too cheap, but more importantly, I want to learn how to do these things. I want to be constantly learning in my life. This great thing that you're watching right now and I'm talking to you on called YouTube is a tremendous resource where you can learn anything that you want. So balance your life with many different passions, but at the core of all of that, have a passion for learning, constantly learning new things, whether that's music related or whether it's something else altogether. Be obsessed with learning. Don't get somebody else to do something that you're perfectly capable of doing yourself if you're willing to do the work and put in the effort because it will pay itself dividends. These are tools that you keep building up in your tool chest of life. And the more and more you learn these things, the more and more other things become easier to you. Now, that's kind of my talk for 2023. Now, we're going to transition to something else because I want to share something else that I'm passionate about with you. So if you're interested in that, hang out for the next part of this video and I'm gonna take you out to my garage. So another thing I like working with is wood. I'm in my garage right now and I've kind of converted this or I'm always seem like I'm in the, the process of continuing to develop and convert it into a full blown carpenter shop uh, where I can kind of get away from things and get creative in other ways. Lately, I've been working with epoxy along with wood. I'm gonna show you some examples now. These examples here so far are all pieces that I've made in my garage. Uh, and they're primarily so far used in food and beverage en environments, whether that's as a charcuterie board, a cutting board, a display board. I mean, really you're only limited by your imagination uh, as far as what you can do with that. So hope you're enjoying seeing some of the pieces that I've done in live use. Now, we're back here into my garage now, and, uh, and I'll talk real quick about the two types of epoxy. Here you've got what's called tabletop epoxy. That's if, you know, for some of you, you know, you've been into a, an old time bar back in the day where it's got some pictures and everything under the bar top, and they've coated that with a clear see-through uh, um, concoction or whatever you wanna call it, but that's what this is, that's tabletop. And that's what you do for any kind of coating after that, or before that, if you want to do like river tables or some things that's a little bit deeper, tabletops one eighth inch, you use deep pour. All of these come in a combination of two parts. You've got one part resin and one part hardener. Uh, as far as the ratio, tabletop is a one to one ratio and deep pour is a two to one ratio. Uh, and so that's, these are the epoxies that I use and I absolutely love it, especially this upstart epoxy. It's one of my favorites so far and I've tried them all. But as an example, here are some boards that you know I'm kind of working on right now. They're not quite finished. They need a little bit more work done to them. But these are some of the ones that I'm kind of literally have just finished uh, yesterday. This one I think is quite cool. It's, it, this is all flame maple. I don't know if, you can, if the camera can quite catch that or not without getting the reflection. Uh, but that's a flame maple, really cool, used a lot uh, for guitars and basses and things like that. One of my favorite tops on a guitar. Um, but outside of that, I've got some of these others. These right here as an example. Uh, these are the ones, now you could, these haven't been sanded yet, so I poured the epoxy. This is the deep pour epoxy. This is a cedar wood, always looks fantastic. And um, once you get them out, you plane them down and get them all flattened down and everything. And then this, this is ready for sanding. Once I finish sanding, I'll either make the decision to go on top with a cutting board oil or a teak or... Uh, tongue oil or something like that. Or if I want that kind of glossy look, that's when I put the tabletop epoxy on it and gives it that glossy look. I tend to do charcuterie boards with tabletop epoxy and cutting boards uh, with usually either tongue oil or cutting board oil or something like that. Uh, very easy to do. But here are some examples that literally I just, I pulled out of the molds uh, yesterday as a matter of fact. I've got all kinds of ones you know, all kinds of different woods here, as you can see. Um, and really, uh, you know, it's really only limited by whatever you can kind of see and imagine as you're going through it. Um, and here's another one. That's really going to turn out really great. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find my... Um, all right, so I never promised to be great at this whole thing. I'm still kind of working this part out. And I'm going to take some uh, alcohol and put on there. And this will give you a, a, an example of what that will look like. 
uh, once it has, you can see all that purple really kind of come out there and really kind of come alive. It looks really cool. And that gives you kind of a hint of what it looked like uh, with a typical finish on it. Uh, and that's really cool. Um, I'm gonna grab the camera in a second. I'm gonna show you some of these other pieces. Okay, so what you're seeing here is some of the pieces at different stages. These pieces right here just came out of the mold. So they've not had anything done with them. These larger pieces that you see here, I use my slab mill. And that's basically, they're too large for my planer. So I have to use a slab mill like the one I'm showing you right now in the video. And that's how I get these even down and get all of that, you know, top epoxy off and get the whole thing nice and flat. And then of course I'll take it through the table saw and square it all out and cut out the edges that I don't want. Um, and so these are in the stages of that. These other pieces, I use some silicon molds. They're very easy. You basically, they're reusable over and over and over. And so I have certain sizes of that. And these pieces right here, these also just came out of, uh, out of the molds, okay? Just pulled them out right before I shot this video. Now, these ones over here, these ones over here are ones that have been finished sanding. They've been planed down. So again, once it comes out of the mold, they get planed down. Once they're planed down, then they're completely sanded. And then once they're sanded, then they're ready for the top coat like I talked about before. Uh, the other pieces that I showed you, I'll show them back to you again. Uh, these pieces here have come out of the planer and they're awaiting sanding. And then once they're done sanding, that's when we make the decision to do a top coat, uh, you know, a, a top coat with epoxy, or we just use a natural wood finish uh, that is food safe. Today, just about everything's food safe. So these are some cool things that I've been working on. You know, I just finished, today's New Year's Day, and today I just finished making this eight foot by eight foot outfeed table slash work table. It's an outfeed table for my table saw. And then it's a work table for me able to do all kinds of other things uh, in, in my garage. I'm working on this station over here that's kind of in a disarray right now, my miter saw station. I have to lower the lower section so I can drop my miter saw so it's level with the top of the, what, the top of the surface there. And then of course, then I'll start moving my tabletop joiner and my router table back into that area. So these are all things that I love, love, love doing. And regardless of whatever it is you want to do, find something you're passionate about. I'm actually considering creating a secondary YouTube channel on how to do all of this. It's one of those things, it's kind of like total mix. Uh, once you crack the code, it's very easy, but getting to that point, there's a lot of mistakes along the way. And that is the case with epoxy. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of look into this side of some things that I do, and another thing that I'm passionate about. Now let's head back into the studio and continue this discussion. Well, I hope you found that somewhat interesting. I, I truly enjoy working with my hands. I love working with wood, especially nice exotic woods and things like that. Uh, I love doing that. I buy all of my lumber from a mill. It's all rough cut. I literally have to get all the bark off all, all of it. I have to plane it down. I have to, you know, to do all the things necessary to get it prepared. It's not like you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you're buying wood that's already pre-cut and pre-finished. I don't mean finished from a, from a sealant or anything, but, you know, it's already square and it's already cut to size or whatever. I don't typically work with that wood because I can get a lot more bang for my buck that way. Now that is another passion and I do think I'm gonna start a YouTube channel about that, mainly because there's so many videos out there teaching people how to work with epoxy and do this stuff and none of them get it right. Not one of them that I found yet really show you all the pitfalls to avoid so you don't waste your money, your effort, your time and wood you don't waste those things. So I'm gonna do a channel. How long I stick with that, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it enough to, so people can learn how to do it and then move on and do something else. But I love doing that. So again, whatever passion you have, don't have just one. Be balanced, learn as much as you can in this life and it will pay you dividends, I promise you. And then when you're old like me, you'll have a lot to teach younger guys like many of you, okay? So until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. And by all means, let's all have one hell of a happy new year in 2023. Take care.